podcast. Good afternoon from AI Summit in Sarajevo in the National Theater, Kiss the Future. Now, because my guest was born in Sarajevo, then he grew up in Spain, then lives in London. Different countries um, uh, pronounce his last name differently. So uh, Bruno Lusic, Lusic, uh, or the third version, uh, I'm going to do it for all of the three markets uh, in the introduction. Uh, Bruno is a member of uh, EBRD's venture capital uh, part in London, a uh, senior uh, board member, right, if I said correctly. Investment officer, yeah. 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 Uh, senior investment officer, uh, and uh, today he joined us uh, in our podcast to speak about a bit about the investments, the overall situation, and his view on, on all of the happenings in Sarajevo and the region. Bruno, welcome. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here, sharing this time with you. Yeah, uh, I'm really happy and appreciate your time uh, spending with us. And uh, first, I want to ask you, uh, how is it uh, working uh, in London for DBRD, such a big organization? Uh, and share us some experiences uh, about it. Sure, absolutely. So look, DBRD is a very big organization, as you, as you mentioned. Um, it's been present in this region for many years, 30 odd years. Um, and it's been present across the economy. Um, so EBRD invests in, in agriculture, in utilities, in infrastructure, like corporations, etc. cetera. Um, and, and EBRD actually is, 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 in, is an equity investor or a lender, so across different financial instruments, um, in, in anything you can put on a balance sheet, probably EBRD's done it. Um, I specifically work in the venture capital team. That was a team that was created around 10 years ago. And we're actually quite independent from the bank and, and, and work pretty much like, a, like a, almost like an independent, um, independent um, part of it. And um, so far, um, we invested two funds uh, and we are at the moment investing our third fund, 250 million fund. And uh, working in BRD is actually very, very interesting. Uh, you get to meet people from all around the world, different cultures. Um, and what I like is actually, you know, the, the equality, the camaraderie that you find that you find there and, and, and very exotic people from coming from very exotic places, which you yeah. otherwise wouldn't wouldn't encounter. Mm. So. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's in a nutshell. Yeah. It's, it's a rich experience. Uh, and uh, I believe you already learned a lot more than uh, working for some smaller company stuff. And um, because of your experience, because of your pedigree, we commented a bit on it before we turned on the cameras. But I want to ask you uh, whether we as people from the Adriatic, maybe also we can speak about Bosnia specifically, uh, do we utilize enough uh, the opportunities, for example, that EBRD is providing uh, towards us? Or, sh or we have the opportunity to do it better? We should be more efficient in it? I think it's good. Good advantage is being taken across the region with the different, like you know, a lot of the motorways, a lot of the utilities, so a lot of the services that people are using in their day to day are actually um, EBRD is involved somehow. Uh, same with the banks. Most of the banks in the region, they're going to get kind of funding from from the bank. I think more specifically to 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 what I do, um, we haven't been that active um, in 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 the space, um, and I think that's. That's 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 a bit of a product of uh, of of the fact that there wasn't until recently a lot of activity um, taking place. We have seen in the in the last years actually the region becoming very interesting. Uh, kind of Bosnia and especially kind of the broader the broader Balkan Balkan region uh, because of the availability of of young technical talent. Um, at, a, at, a, at a very good cost for international firms to, to, to tap here and, 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 and that shortage of talent that you would find in elsewhere or, or, or raising costs, um, you, can, you can benefit by tapping into the local talent. And what we're seeing is, is actually companies now emerging from the region um, 
and trying to play globally and 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 selling into the US and Germany out of out of out of this this region leveraging that technological technological talent and if you look about it we we complain historically like oh you know we are poorly communicated we don't have the right transport links etc 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 guess what uh to write software to sell technology to build ai you know you don't need uh, yeah. roads you don't need actually to travel you can do it from you know a cafe uh, outside here somewhere and I, and I think we should take and yes, people are taking the the uh, the advantage and the opportunity to 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 build something uh, something new and 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 change change basically the way societies and economies work in this region yeah. uh, definitely I believe that there are a lot of problems in the mindset itself uh, and uh, Somehow, after uh, all of these conversations that I have, uh, if I was a politician or somebody who is leading the processes, I would decide, okay, Bosnia should be an AI, AI country because um, in this AI race, uh, nobody is too far away from us. You know, it's, it's, it's more or less the new thing on the market uh, that's, I mean, in the Western world, it's, it's being utilized enormously but uh, comparing to some other industries I believe that we have a chance in the AI I think I think there is a big big chance I think you know I mentioned the the local talent um, that I, I think another thing which we are not leveraging there is a significant diaspora of people out there um, they are coming back you know a lot of the a lot of the boomers that mm -hmm. that that left are now retiring they're coming back they're coming back with capital but guess what like the children of these people might also want to come back and you actually having having younger generations i think it's especially especially happening in croatia and in and in bosnia that are uh, in, in serbia they're actually deciding to to come back to to where they left or their parents left a few years ago uh, I think we are going to see that in Bosnia as well. What I think it's also a big advantage of Bosnia um, is is energy. So one of the things which you know we talk about AI, we, we just forget that you need a huge amount of energy. And guess what? Like Bosnia is one of the largest exporters of energy in the world. We have you know a, a lot of a lot of hydropower that generates kind of very cheap electricity here. And I think that is something that can benefit hugely, well, well, well designed and 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 did did the right way. I think that's something that can benefit hugely, uh, and the country can take advantage of this of this competitive advantage in, in energy that we have. Yeah, it's geography was quite, let's say, merciful towards us because um, uh, we we in fact have the infrastructure uh, to do whatever we want. We just need to be a bit more clever, and maybe more brave. Yeah. I think that's the last point is interesting. I think that's the that's the thing. I think it's here and it's happening across the region. I think um, I, I tend to kind of jokingly call it the the, the Nikola Tesla paradox, yeah. right? So, you know, Nikola Tesla was a very very successful inventor, uh, but turns out he wasn't a very good entrepreneur. And that's a bit what I find locally. I find kind of a lot of s strong technical talent, a bunch of kind of potential Nikola Teslas. Um, but what you need is actually hone those commercial skills, the ability to sell. Like uh, you need to go out there and persuade people to buy what you, whatever you built. And I think this is the skill that I'm seeing lacking. Um, and this is going back to kind of people that left this country coming back. I think these are the skills that they can bring in, like uh, that, that you acquired by having if you grew up in, in the UK, in the US, in Canada, in Germany. I think you kind of, a lot of people that, that you know, developed there would have, would have gained those skills. And I think combining those, those commercial skills with the local technical talent, with, with this a bit of, you know, yeah. the, the Nikola Teslas around the region, uh, I think that could be a, a great combination. I fully agree with you. And I believe that diaspora is probably one of the biggest strengths uh, our countries have. Uh, in fact, and I would also agree with you uh, because I've seen these examples uh, that uh, younger generations born in Sweden, born in Germany, born in all of the countries in Europe, it somehow happened that they have the passion and the will to come back. And now it's again up to us, as always, up to us to find a way uh, also to persuade them and to provide them the infrastructure uh, and jobs that they can live on one in these transitional periods to prove them that they are safe, that they have uh, health care and stuff. 
And eventually, if we manage to bring these people back, I believe we can be okay. Yeah. yeah. I think beyond this, you know, I, I was mentioning mentioning earlier, you mentioned sort of my different origins. I, I grew up in Barcelona and I saw Barcelona developed like from having no technology companies into like we have these very large, significant and, and it's an engine of kind of the local economy a bit, the tech sector and the tech ecosystem. And that developed in the last two decades. Um, and it started locally, like mm -hmm. people started actually, you know, as outsourcers and, 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 and working for multinational firms. firms. But then you actually have people from abroad, like, you know, they, when you go around certain neighborhoods in Barcelona, like the tech tech neighborhood, you barely will speak local language being spoken, mostly will be English. Mm -hmm. And you find that it's a Canadian, it's a German, it's an American, it's a Japanese. Um, and they came there because, you know, they like the, like the vibes, like the city. Mm -hmm. I think Bosnia can offer that. I think people uh, underestimate how unique and powerful our nature is. Uh, I was jokingly saying, like, you know, for these digital nomads, you know, most mm -hmm. of the lives of these people, I wake up in the morning and do yoga and one hour of meditation and then when it's US time I kind of log myself in and work from a cafe I mean this is this, you know if you look around us look at these mountains look at these landscapes it's 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 you know if you want to have a digital nomad life uh, yeah. come here meditate in the morning like do your yoga yeah. whatever whatever the kind of the techie guys love and then kind of when it's US time you log yourself in to your San Francisco colleagues or to your New York colleagues and and you know build whatever you're building I think Sarajevo and Bosnia can can offer this and and, and actually it's happening like slowly yeah. in surrounding areas Montenegro and Croatia for instance are taking advantage of the coast and and and, and that's happening. I think that's a good way to start um, and actually bring not just the diaspora, but also, yeah. you know, make this uh, 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 an attractive place for people to, mm. to come here. And, and, and even though it might be working for kind of international companies, it's a good way to, to have them here and have those brains here and mm. create this knowledge spillover that I think is, is the catalyst for later building a full blown ecosystem. Yeah, I agree. And um uh, for example, in Bosnia, there are not so many big corporations, big tech corporations. Uh, when I look at it, uh, somehow it was major, majorly the, 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 the headquarters, let's say, for these regions uh, in the corporations were either uh, Ljubljana, uh, Zagreb, or, Bel or, Bel or Belgrade. Uh, sorry. And uh, then a couple of them started. and. Immediately, you can see the rise of the quality in the people who are doing sales, pre-sales, business development, because it's kind of a different life uh, working for a big uh, corporation. And then it raises competitiveness in the market. So basically, I'm, for example, I'm very sad that in Sarajevo, we don't have Amazon or IBM. IBM. Uh, why? Because even though they are my competition, I would still be happy to have them to raise, to, 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 they, will, they will make the market increase and raise in the quality. And uh, those companies are the ones that produce those people that yeah. work good aggressively, those that we need to sell the products. I agree. I, I mean, I think, you know, I come from the world of sports. I used to be a professional athlete. And, and, and I think, remember that, you know, the better the people I used to train with, the better I felt I was playing. So I think it's the same. You, you want to surround yourself actually with, you know, yeah. competition is healthy. Uh, and having talent, talented people around you and, 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 and in quality, quality companies, I think that, as you say, generates. Uh, but but could you just imagine if, if, you know, you start as a, you know, say a U.S. startup that decides to create their R&D tech, tech, tech mm -hmm. team um, here in, in Bosnia. These, these developers at some point might be attending sales calls with enterprises that want to acquire that solution in the U.S. Mm -hmm. in, in that is a learning, attending that call, seeing how kind of your colleagues are selling, what actually yeah. the customers, what, what kind of questions are they asking, what, what is their concern. That's, that's invaluable knowledge. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's kind of, you know, that, that's, that's what should yeah. be taking place and trying to bring these yeah. corporations here and actually creating those R&D tech yeah. centers here. It's, it's what's going to help yeah. catalyze this. Understood. And um, for the end of our conversations, it's really inspiring. I would just... I'm enjoying and I would like to let you talk and I'll be listening without asking questions. Um, uh, what would be advice, uh, let's say, for the industry itself uh, in the Balkans, for those who are going to listen uh, to this, uh, from the perspective of somebody who really knows the investment process, knows what's in front of these people, uh, to those who are thinking uh, to jump, to go towards the startups, uh, 
uh, life to go towards the AI. Uh, what would be your main advices towards them? I'd say don't be afraid of failure. Think big and think crazy. I want the entrepreneurs, the founders that I invest, I, I need to see a degree of craziness. I need to see that, you know, you need to believe things that kind of the average person wouldn't believe that you're able to do it. Uh, you know, you want to see that in a founder. And I think we need to incentivize people actually to be able to, to, uh, to, 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 to think big, to be brave, to take risky mm -hmm. decisions, take risks. And, and don't shy away, like, you know, it is possible to build a global big business out of here. I think people should have that ambition uh, and, and people around them that are actually going to, going to believe that that is possible, surround yourself with these individuals. So I think that, that, that would be my main advice is actually, you know, believe in it, that it can be done uh, because it's, it's happening. Like we've, we've seen this in, in countries similar size out of the region. Baltics is a good example. Like it's a small country, small region. Global multinational companies are being built out of out of countries that have the similar size uh, and, and and similar similar kind of structure as as Bosnia and Croatia. So so I, I'd say b believe in it and 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 take the risks and 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 try to make something big and global. Like don't don't aim small. Like uh, we, we we like to see yeah. Uncha thinking. Go for an overkill. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, mate. It was amazing. Pleasure talking to you.